As you guys might be aware, I've been spending some of my leisure time over at the Sahara. A friend of mine, Persuadio, runs a game there every Tuesday, I believe, and that's the Deep Stack 1-3. It's a 600 minimum buy-in with no max, and it can get wild. However, he also hosts some other games there, sometimes PLO, sometimes Mix, and occasionally he likes to throw in a 5-5-10. But it's not a typical insane buy-in 5-5-10, it's a very accessible 5-5-10, which is cool because out-of-towners who want to come play a little bit bigger than normal, but who don't really want to play super deep with all their money on the line, can sit in this game with $10 blinds, or at least a $10 force straddle, and not really lose their shirt. I got into this game for 1k at about 7.40pm, and I want to say it was a Thursday, or possibly a Wednesday. I don't really know, I, I also might have had some beverages. Initially we started off playing the show one game, which basically just means that the winner of the hand has to show one card, but uh, eventually this fell off, so if I stop kind of uh, remembering what these were, I swear it's not just the alcohol talking. In this first interesting hand, I'm in the straddle and middle position and the big blind both limp to me. You can tell this is not a typical tough 510 lineup. I have king 9 and I decide to check my option here. The flop comes jack 9 8 and we are three handed, big blind is first to act and checks, I check as well with my second pair, and middle position checks it through. Turn is the jack of diamonds, which of course adds a pair to the board and it seems unlikely that anyone has a jack here too often. Checks through once again. The river is the king of hearts, I decided to bet $10 now because uh, even though I don't have a really strong king, I think that there aren't too many strong kings out there in this lid pot anyway. Both fold and I decide to show the 9, of course. In this next hand, I'm on the button with 6-5 of clubs and I bump it up to $40. I go a little bigger than normal here, partially because the third blind in play makes this a slightly bigger game in terms of the blinds than just a normal 5-10. The small blind calls and we go heads up to a flop of jack 8 4 with one club. So here we are with just a gutter and a backdoor flush draw, but I've got a dream. He checks, I decide to see bet 65 trying to take it down, and he makes the call. Turn is a 5 of spades, so I pick up a pair. I still have my gutter and I technically have some outs to two pair in trips now, so when he checks, I decide that rather than checking back my very, very marginal showdown value, I want to keep the pressure on with this hand and turn it essentially into the bluff that it already was. I bet $100 and he does make the fold, so he was just pretty weak here it seems. I believe I showed the 6 here because showing the 5 feels a little bit weird. 1.1k in the stack now, and early position opens it up to 20. I'm in the straddle with king 3 offsuit, and we're playing a fun game, so I decide to call. Flop comes king 7 6, it checks through. Turn is the 8 of spades, and while I have top pair here, I don't think I really want to be betting. It's just a little bit too weak, and I can use this hand to protect my checking range, especially given that I've checked twice. This is a nice way to go. I check, and he checks it back. River is the 10 of diamonds, bringing in a one-liner, and now I don't think this hand is even strong enough to value bet. I check again, it's checked through, and my hand is good. Again, this being a fun game, I'm in the cutoff with 5-4 offsuit, and I bump it up to $40. The big blind and the straddle both call, so we go three ways to a flop of king 8-3 with two diamonds. I basically have nothing here, but this is a pretty disconnected board, so when it checks to me, I decide to see bet $35 or so. The straddle calls, and the turn is the six of diamonds, one of the backdoor cards I was hoping for, although you could argue the diamond is somewhat worse for us just because he can have flush draws, and uh, obviously drawing to a five or four high flush, whichever it was, is not really that great. However, I do decide to barrel, and I put on a big one here, $150. He jams. I don't really know what this means, he's jamming quite a bit of money over the top here, but luckily our hand is just a bit too weak to really have to even think about it, I let it go. 900 in the stack and I open it up in the hijack with pocket kings to 35. The big blind is the only caller and we go heads up to queen 95 rainbow. He checks, I decide to see bet on this somewhat connected board, many gut shots and open ended straight draws abound, so I bet 55 sizing up a little bit here, and he calls. Turns to Queen of Diamonds, pairing the top card on the board and giving us some bad news, but he doesn't continue any further bad news here, he just checks. I don't think I can get a ton more value here, although I could probably get some out of a 9 or a straight draw. I decide to check it back though. River is the six of spades and I'm feeling pretty good about my hand when he checks, so I decide to put out a small, please call me bet, of 
He does call, and my hand is good. In this next hand, I'm in the hijack with King Jack offsuit, and I open to 35. The cutoff puts in an absolutely tiny 3-bet to 75, and I call. The flop comes ace, 10, 6, 2-tone, which gives me a backdoor flush draw. I check. He checks it back, though, and on a turn 3 of spades, I think he's probably pretty capped here most of the time, so I decide to bet. I make it 60, and he puts in the call. The river's a 10 of clubs, which means I have a blocker to the nut flush. I don't think he has a 10 that often that he's 3-betting. Uh, a single 10 in his hand doesn't make a ton of sense at this size. So I decide to put on the pressure, knowing that he can't have the nut flush. I make it $310, and he folds. Of course, I show the king of clubs. It's the very next hand, and I'm in middle position with king jack offsuit once again, and once again, I open to 35. This time I don't face a 3-bet though, the hijack and the straddle both call, and we go 3 bits to a flop of ace-jack-6. The straddler checks, I check, and the hijack bets 60. Straddler folds, and at this point I have second pair with the best kicker possible, so I put in the call, not loving life if I face additional bets though. Turn is the 10 of clubs, uh, meaning that I have a blocker to the nuts, but besides that, it's not a particularly great card for me. Checks through this time, and on a river 10, I think he has some stabs that just run into trips here, so I don't really love doing anything but checking my very marginal showdown value. That's what I do. He checks it back and wins with ace 5 offsuit. In this next hand, we have 1.2k in the stack, under the gun limps in for 10, middle position limps, and the big blind, who is DGAF, who you may know from his Sessions podcast, which is wildly popular and a really good listen, by the way, info down in the description. His name is Billy, and he limps in as well. I'm in the straddle here, and I check my option. Flop comes out, king, queen, three, which is gin for us, checks all the way to middle position. I don't like leading here just because uh, this board doesn't actually favor our range. Um, the middle position player bets $30, Billy calls in the big blind, and I make it 140 now, putting on the check raise. Uh, I have plenty of bluffs I'd want to do this with, so it's nice to have this hand in here too. Folds around to DJAF, who calls, and the turn is the jack of spades. This shouldn't change too much, maybe he could sometimes hold on with a gutter. He maybe has something like king jack, but I think that usually raises pre. So I decide to bet again here for $230, and he makes the call. The river is terrible. It's the Jack of Diamonds pairing the board and counterfeiting my second pair. And I now have Queens and Jacks with a King. Brutal. DJAF checks to me and I briefly consider turning this into a bluff, but given that I felt like I was probably going to be able to jam bricks for value, it doesn't seem like it makes sense to do it here as a bluff when I almost never have a Jack in range besides specifically Jack 10. Given that he can have that too, I decided to just check it back. I probably have no showdown value, but I don't think I want to bluff. I end up losing to King Deuce of Diamonds. As you guys may know, I'm playing games on Club GG now. I'm joined by Greg Goes All In, Adam Rude, Branson Poker, and many others. And we run everything from PLO to bomb pots and meetup games galore. Info in the description down below if you'd like to play with us. 950 in the stack now, and there are three limpers to me in the big blind. I limp as well with Queen 9 offset suit. The straddle makes it 60 and it folds around to me. I uh, wouldn't really advocate this normally, but in a fun game, I'm just kind of splashing around. I end up making the call. Probably still bad, but the flop does bail us out with queen jack 9. I check. He bets 80 and not really wanting to see a bunch of scare cards on the turn. I decided to bump it up to 275, although this is potentially too thin as well. Uh, I just don't really think that there are a lot of turn cards we like to see, and with a decent amount of money behind, calling might be the more prudent option. However, I'm setting up to jam the turn, but he just ends up falling, so we get to take this one down, and I think we might show the 9 here. In this next hand, we're now playing 5 5 10 20 with an optional double straddle on. There's a limper in the hijack, and DJAF in the big blind makes it 100. I'm in the double straddle with ace 10 offsuit, and I decide to make the call. He's definitely capable of having much worse hands than we hold here. The limper folds, so we go heads up to a flop of jack 10 8. DJAF bets 105, and I'm not going anywhere with second pair here, I call. Turn is the five of clubs, bringing in some draws, and he jams, covering my about $730 or so. I'm not really loving life here, there's obviously value hands he can have, but with this sizing, I felt like it was very likely he's extremely polarized. And with my exact holding, I'm blocking a lot of the important combos while unblocking bluffs. 
Hands like pocket 10s, jack 10 suited are all significantly less likely when I'm holding this hand. Uh, even something like 10 8 if he's getting a little wily. Maybe having a 9 here would be good too, and probably having jack 9 might be slightly better. But given that I don't have a king or a queen, which are dramatically involved in basically every bluffing hand in it, uh, and not having a 9 means those hands are more likely to be turned into bluffs too, something like 9 8 10 9 as well. When he sizes this way, I just didn't really believe, and I end up calling. He's got jack eight though, and I'm in just awful shape here. I really need to hit an ace or a 10. We do decide to run it twice. The first river bricks out, and the second river is a 10. I get super duper lucky to chop here. I was way, way, way behind. I think this is probably one of the worst hands I play of the night, which, well, keep watching and maybe you'll disagree. The knight really only gets crazier from here, and now with two limps, I'm in the cutoff with ace three of clubs, and I bump it up to $60. We're back at 5-5-10 though. The straddler and both limpers call, so he goes four ways to ace nine seven, and the straddle leads into us for $150. Folds round to me, and while I have top pair here, I'm really hating life. There's a decent amount of money behind, at least three or four hundred dollars, and it's really hard to think that we're ahead of much. There are a few draws available, but no flush draws, so it's not like a pair and a flush draw is even possible. If we're talking about straight draws and then better ace x, we're usually really far behind, and I just fold. I don't know how, but I get him to show his hand completely, and he's got ace queen offsuit, so feeling pretty good getting away from that one. Now we're on to the next hand. In this next one, I am in the double straddle for $20, and there's just an open jam for something like $100 to $150. Bucks. I am in the double straddle with a6 offsuit, and given that we're playing like less than 10 big blinds effective against this player, I end up just calling it off. He's been jamming a ton and finding random all-ins. The board here runs out 10 9 4 9 4 It's looking pretty good that we'll either chop or win here, and as expected, we end up beating an unknown hand. Immediately following, the guy next to me says that he likes my style and puts on the double straddle as well. With two limpers, I'm in the big blind with ace-nine of hearts and I bump it up to 120. Only the first limper calls, so we go heads up to 9-8-6 rainbow. I decide to check here, hoping to either put on a check jam sort of situation or possibly just check call if he uses a bigger size and string him along. However, he checks it back, and on the turn 9 of diamonds, I don't think we're going to get him to do much betting for us, but we might be able to eke out a little value against second pair or some kind of draw. I bet $140, but he just folds, so we probably won the maximum here anyway. With tons of shenanigans going around, and the stack sizes being relatively small compared to the blinds, there have just been tons of insane all-ins, uh, a lot of the hands being shown as well. We're back at 5-5-10, and I'm in the cutoff with queen of diamonds and make it 40. The small blind jams, and DJF says, that's his specialty, just move all in against the guy who never folds. <laughs> uh, this is hilarious. The count's about $220, so when it folds around to me, I actually do think it's close. We'll often be up against a king or an ace high hand, but we'll rarely be just totally dominated based on how these players are playing today. Uh, I end up calling off because he's just straight up wild. The board rolls out. King, seven, deuce, eight, five. And he turns over seven three of spades so we end up with the best hand with second pair queen high kicker and uh winning probably the biggest pot i've won with a hand like this in quite a while in a cash game playing some more shenanigans here but trying to stick to my guns of playing better ranges than them 1.2k in the stack and with two limpers i'm in the straddle at just 5 5 10 and bump it up with ace queen of diamonds to 60. there's two callers and the flop comes 10 10 7. i decide to see bet 50 bucks only the early position limper calls. Turn is a four of diamonds. I check, he checks it back, and the river is the eight of diamonds. I decided to check here since I actually think I have a fair bit of showdown value, but I end up losing to ace king that somehow didn't put any raises in pre at this table where everyone's being crazy. It's an orbit or two later, and this guy is still stacking off like a wild man, but we're now down to four or five handed. He limps in the small blind, and I'm in the straddle, and decide to raise to 40. He seems annoyed, and there's also some confusion around like whose chips went into which part of which bet. It's getting pretty confusing. So he now defiantly makes it 125. It's abundantly clear to me that he's just frustrated and kind of on life tilt, perhaps, uh... I think that he was arguing with someone at the table for like a solid hour and a half about something outrageous. So I don't really buy it and I decided to just jam it all in here for his 375. Almost more of like a tournament type situation, but clearly we have no fold equity here and he calls it off with 8-7 of diamonds. 
and the board runs out a pair for him. Uh, apparently he doesn't run it twice because he arrogantly says, I don't even know what that is. Okay then. So down a fair bit and I rebuy for 500. Then it's straddle versus straddle, four-handed, and I end up raising ace-queen into ace-king for this guy who's been all in with seven three of spades, eight seven of diamonds, and all manner of hands. And uh, yeah, we get stacked for like 750 bucks and decide to call it quits there. It's been a really long time since I was in such a wild game like this. They can be really fun and sometimes quite lucrative, but you're also facing massive swings if you play correctly. Not claiming that I did that here, but certainly some of the all-ins that I won and lost show you what this game can turn into if you're willing to ride the roller coaster. I could have easily gotten a 3 or 4k stack in this game had a couple more pots gone my way, but I also easily could have lost 3k. That's all I've got for this vlog. Thank you guys for watching. Please try to remember just triple.